Hello, my name is Tethlin Penry. I'm a solitary pagan witch. I'm an author and the founder of the Wolf and Howl Press. And today's... Oh, that noise, I've got to stop. That noise is Noah snoring. There is nothing like a St Bernard snoring. You can send me to sleep, but I promise I won't go to sleep here. Today's little chat is about the use of drugs, alcohol and sex in magical workings. Um, and it was suggested to me by uh, somebody who wrote to me via Facebook. And uh, I always like suggestions because I want to know what people would like answered. If I know the answer or if I have a guess at it, I will tell you. And if I don't know it, likewise, I will tell you as well. I haven't a clue. But with this one, I do know a little bit, although obviously I'm only speaking from my own experience. So, firstly, the principles of it. People will sometimes say you should not use drugs, alcohol or sex in magical workings. Now, that becomes a bit tricky if you're going to do something like use wine or beer or something like that as a libation, because of course you are going to use alcohol. So, there is a big difference between using some alcohol and getting so roaring drunk you don't remember anything the next day. Um, I tend not to use uh, much by way of alcohol. I never have, and there's a very good reason for this. I get drunk very quickly. I really do. I mean, a pint of cider, I'm, I'm like the dogs, I'm snoring under the table. I'm totally out of it. Um, half a pint of cider and I'm, I'm singing in the life and heart, soul of the party. So... I know my limitations, and I think this is the point. You have to know your limitations. And the other thing I think you need to ask is, why do I want to use alcohol, drugs, or sex? Am I involving anybody else, and are they happy with the arrangement? Um, I tend to think it comes down to us personally. Um, using alcohol, um, it's fine for some people in moderation. Some people have a greater tolerance to it than others. Some like me have virtually no tolerance at all, so I tend to stay away from it. Anyone who ever witnessed the time back in the 1970s when I'd had about two pints of Guinness and was dancing, singing all around my hat in a snowstorm, uh, no, <laughs> nobody would recommend me to do that again. Um, so, Yes, it's okay, but I think what you have to ask yourself, and this is something you have to ask right the way through anything extra that you use, am I doing it because I want to get drunk, or am I doing it because I genuinely believe that the alcohol has a vital part to play in the ritual? And if you're using anybody else, how do they feel about it? Because we don't really have the right to force other people to get completely hammered or Brahms and list just because we want to. And unfortunately, it does still happen. So that's the one. On the topic of drugs, I think the same applies as to alcohol, with the proviso that some drugs are still, whether we like it or not, illegal. Now, I've got to say, no, I've never knowingly done any drugs. Um, I just haven't. I don't condemn people for doing it if they feel it's going to help their ritual in some way. I do condemn them force feeding it to other people or putting pressure on others to say, yes, you've got to do it this way. And that goes for anything in magical workings. You mustn't do it. And I do feel you have to be very careful. Are you using the ritual as an excuse to do drugs? But otherwise, I mean, if you can find a way of working something in to your ritual, then yes. But you've got to be extremely careful what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because, you see, once you start, like, I can only speak from the point of view of alcohol, with alcohol, what I don't like is I lose control. Now, there are some people who feel that frees up the magic, and maybe it does for them, but it doesn't for me. So I don't do it. And if you feel it doesn't for you, well, stick to your guns. I'm not saying never try it, but I am saying understand why you might want to do it or not. And obviously with drugs you've got to be extremely careful because uh, some of them, as I said, are illegal. So again, you've got to be very careful. But then again, some people regard caffeine as a drug. Well, I wouldn't seriously tell someone not to have a strong coffee while they're working. I'm sure there's probably instances when it's very helpful. 
uh, maybe to help you stay awake if nothing else. So yes, I think it's horses for courses. I think you have to use your common sense. There's an awful uh, tendency nowadays within uh, magic and witchcraft to try to tell other people what to do. And I've got to be honest, I don't much like it. I think putting pressure on other people, making them feel they're doing it wrong, is rather arrogant. And I'm only talking to you from my own point of view and from my own experience. What you do with what I say is entirely up to you. I have no control over it. And that brings us rather neatly to sex. Now, <clears throat> stop sniggering at the back. <laughs> no. I think the trouble, particularly in the UK, is that sex has got a rather smutty side to it. In other words, people snigger, they make jokes about it, and it does take the, the uh, seriousness of it. There are times when people use sex, and they use it in order to achieve a climax. So like the sexual climax or orgasm, they are using sex, either masturbation by themselves or sex with a partner, in order to achieve a release that they could not get in any other way, as a method, usually, of sending the spell on its way. Okay, we've got that out of the way. Should we do it? Well, if you have a sexual partner who's happy to do it with you, fine. If you are leading someone out into the woods saying, you've got to do this with me, otherwise you're not really a witch, no. No, no, and no again. Run like hell. Get your clothes, girl, and run like hell, or boy, or whatever. Run like hell. That is not sex in magic. Okay? It's not. And there are far too many people who are doing this kind of thing at the moment and really need to be reported. If only we could get over our embarrassment at sex in magic and being witches. So it's high time we did. Um, again, the thing is, are we, are we wanting sex in magic because we need it? Or are we being lazy and saying, well, that's the only way I can get, I can build the energy up? Well, no, it's not the only way you can build the energy up. Good grief. I mean, if you can't build energy up in other ways other than sex, I'm sorry, you're not much of a witch at all. There are other ways of doing it. Um, some of it requires a certain amount of self-discipline where you are literally building it layer upon layer. But my big concern is not whether you are masturbating in a dark room or having sex with a, a willing and a mentally competent partner because some people are willing but they're not really understanding what they're doing that is not what i'm saying that is your business right that's not my business that's fine what i'm saying is just be sure that when you want to do things in your ritual that you understand why you're doing them and what you're doing and uh don't take advantage of other people don't allow yourself to be taken advantage of. There is absolutely no rule that says you have to use drugs, alcohol or sex. Likewise, there is no rule that says that you must not use them. The point is, whatever you use, it has to be your choice. And I do hope you found that helpful. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.